Okay, hello guys. Uh, Mr. Lau here again uh, for tutorial 2, Thermodynamics. Okay, so let's look at the first question. So we have a working stroke of an air motor. The compressed air has an internal energy of 4 to 5 kJ at the beginning. Okay, so again, let's write out what we are given. So in this case, U, U1 is equal to 4 to 5 kJ. Okay, and the internal energy of 210 kilojoule after the expansion. So U2 is equal to 210 kilojoule. If the work done by the air during the expansion is 98 kilojoule. Okay, so in this case, it's work done by the air. And it's also stated that it is an expansion process. Okay, so you can imagine that you are the air inside the motor. So you want to do work by pushing the actuator or the impeller out of the way. Okay, meaning to say that it's a work out. So in this case, since it's work out, it will be positive. Okay. So calculate the heat energy transferred during the process and state whether is it a cooling or heating process. Okay, so let's use the first law, U2 minus U1 is equals to Q minus W. Okay, so we just put in the numbers, U2 is 210 minus 425 is equals to Q minus 98. So in this case, we calculate Q will be negative 117 kilojoule. And since it's negative, right? So negative means it's heat out, out of the system. Out of the system means that the system undergoes cooling. Okay. So remember, uh, two important points to take note over here. Uh, when we are looking at thermodynamics, we are talking about the fluid. Okay. Is the fluid receiving heat or losing heat? Is the is the fluid doing work or the fluid is receiving work so in this case the air is our subject of interest okay and in this case the air is doing work okay so it's doing work out of the system therefore it is work out and it's positive another indicator of positive is because it's an expansion process okay so imagine yourself to be enclosed in the system and you want to expand or stretch yourself out you have to push outwards okay so in this case work is positive okay that's it for question number one question number two during the working stroke of an internal combustion engine 625 kilojoule of heat energy is rejected from the system okay so Q12 in this case, okay, it's rejected from the system means heat out. Heat out means negative, okay, negative 625 kJ. And the internal energy of the working fluid in the system has been reduced by 1350. Okay, take note, the working fluid in the system has been reduced, huh? reduced, meaning to say final minus initial is negative 1350 kilojoule. Okay, reduced, meaning to say the final state is smaller than the initial state. Okay, so there is a decrease by 1350 kilojoule. So determine the work energy transferred during the process and state whether it's an expansion or a compression process. Okay, again, we use the first law U2 minus U1 is equal to Q minus W. Okay, plug in the numbers, minus 1350 on the left hand side, Q minus minus 6, sorry, Q in this case is minus 625, minus W. Alright, so this one is cancel. Okay, so in this case you will work out W. So W will be 725 kilojoule. Okay, so this is a positive value. Positive value means that it is work 
output correct so as mentioned from question one when there's a work output the system undergoes a expansion process Right. Okay, so simple. That's it for question number two. Okay, next uh, we'll move on to question number three. Okay, so again we have a closed system. During a non-flow process, 280 kJ of heat is supplied to the system. Okay, so it's Q in. Uh. Q in meaning it is positive 280 kilojoule. Okay, so this is the given information. Okay, for part A, if no work energy is transferred during the process, okay, so work is zero, no transfer, determine the change in internal energy. State whether is it an increase or a decrease. So if no work, okay, we use our first law. Okay, so U2 minus U1 will be equals 280 minus 0, so it is 280 kilojoule. Alright, so in this case, U2 minus U1 is 280 kilojoule, positive, correct? So, meaning to say the final is greater than the initial. Oh, therefore, there is a increase in internal energy all right b okay if 325 kilojoule of work is produced by the system okay 325 kilojoule is produced okay the keyword here produced meaning it is work out okay work out is positive Okay, therefore again U2 minus U1 is equal to Q minus W which is equal to 280 minus 325 this is minus 45 kilojoule okay so negative oh, meaning to say there is a decrease okay therefore there is a decrease drop in internal energy Okay, so that's it for question 3. Next, we move on to question 4. Okay, so question 4, we have an open system operating under steady flow condition. Receive fluid at the following state. Okay, pressure 15 bar. Okay, again we write down. So P1 is equal to 15 bar. So we change to Pascal. Specific volume of 0 0.2029. So V1 is 0 0.2029. Okay, specific internal energy U1 2952. Okay, and velocity. Okay, we we'll use uh, C1 as velocity 30 meter per second. Okay, so this is the inlet and fluid leaves the system at the following state okay so p2 will be 1.5 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal okay v2 will be 1.286 meter cube per kg okay u2 will be 2580 kilojoule per kg and c2 will be 100 meter per second Okay, the mass flow rate of the fluid is 0.5 and the inlet is 20 meters above the outlet pipe. Okay, so we know that mass flow rate is 0.5. Okay, so mass flow rate M dot 1 will be equal to M dot 2 which is equal to 0.5 kg per second. Okay, so this is the conservation of mass. Whatever goes in must come out. So both the inlet and outlet will experience 0.5 kg per second of 
fluid flow okay next the second information is that the inlet pipe is 20 meters above the outlet pipe okay so this will be reflected in your z okay remember z is the height and gz is the term that represents your potential energy okay can so in this case since the inner part is 20 meters above the outer pipe so z1 minus z2 is 20 meters okay can so these are the information given to us by the question so we can be so they want us to find uh, if the heat energy is lost to the surrounding at the rate of 28 okay so we also have one more so in this case q dot out is equal to 28 kilojoule per second okay okay determine the power developed by the system okay power developed by the system so we shall use our uh, flow equation okay recap what's our flow equation q dot in plus w dot in plus m dot 1 u1 plus uh, gz1 plus p1 v1 plus c1 square over 2 is equals to q dot out plus w dot out plus m dot 2 okay u2 plus gz2 plus p2 v2 plus c2 square over 2 okay so this is our flow equation okay so in this case we can start cancelling out terms that is uh, not included okay in this case there's no work in so we cancel okay there's also no q in so we can also cancel that okay so q out we have which is uh, 28 kilojoule per second w dot out uh, is what we want to find because we want to find the power developed by the system okay m dot one we have u one we have g z one uh, we do not have exactly the value of g z one but we do know z one minus z two is 20. so later on we can do some manipulation to g z one and g z two okay to get out this 20 so we'll see later p1 v1 we have c1 square over 2 okay we have so same thing u2 we have p2 v2 we have c2 square over 2 we also have okay so in this case we need to do a small manipulation we need to shift the gz1 and the gz2 okay in order to come up with this z1 minus z2 okay so let me just uh, do a quick manipulation so m dot 1 u1 plus p1 v1 plus c1 square over 2 okay plus m dot g z1 minus z2 okay so basically what i've done is i've shifted this g z2 and m dot 2 over to the left hand side okay since m dot are the same so i'll just uh, relabel it as m dot so m dot g g is 9.1 z1 minus z2 okay it goes to q dot out plus w dot out plus m dot 2 u2 plus p2 v2 plus c2 square over 2 okay so once this manipulation is done we are ready to plug in the numbers okay so m dot one is a uh, 0.5 okay u one is two nine five two okay plus p one v one okay p one is in pascal all right p one is in pascal v1 is in meter cube per kg oh, both of these are SI unit 
but we lumped in U1. U1 is not in SI unit, U1 is in kilo joule or kg. Okay, so as I mentioned in class, uh, I will prefer to work everything in terms of kilos. Okay, so I will, what I will do is I will take the P1 V1. Okay, P1 V1. Oh, and then I will divide this by 1000. Oh, to change this into kilo. Plus C1 square, 30 square over same thing. Okay, because uh, C1 was in SI unit. Okay, so again I want it in kilo. So I'll divide by 1000 again. So this is divided by 2000. Lah. Okay, plus M dot, which is 0.5 again. G will be 9.81. Okay, Z1 minus Z2, we know is 20. So again, to work this in kilos, I need to divide the whole thing by 1000. Okay, so Q dot out is 28 kilojoules per second. Okay, plus W dot out. Okay, plus, sorry, I have to squeeze here a bit. Huh? Plus what? U2. Okay, U2 in this case is uh, 2580 plus P2V2. So again, P2 times V2 divided by 1000. Okay, plus C2 square over 2000. Alright, so this completes our flow equation. So the unknown is worked out. Okay, so I will press the calculator for everything to solve my workout. So my workout in this case will be getting 211.6 kJ per second. Alright. So if there's no question, I'll move on to question number five. Okay, so question 5, same thing, we have a steady flow process, 0.65 kg per second of fluid enters the system. Okay, so without a further ado, we will do m.1 is equal to m.2, which is 0.65. Okay, enters with a velocity of 150, so C1 will be 150. The fluid leaves the system at 60, so C2 will be 60. Specific enthalpy okay, of the fluid leaving is 345 kJ per kg smaller than that of the entering. Okay, so leaving is 345 smaller than that of the entering. Okay, so entering is bigger than the one that is leaving. So Entering in this case will be H1, leaving H2, and the difference is 345 kJ per kg. Okay, so this statement here oh, is trans transformed into this, this mathematical statement. And the heat loss to the surrounding is 60 kJ per second. Okay, so Q dot out will be 60. Okay, I need to re-emphasize again, for flow equation, there is no, uh, no plus or minus. Everything is positive. Okay, because all the sign and, and all the orientation has been taken care of. Okay, so Q out in this case will be positive 60 kJ per second. Okay, it's not like the non-flow equation. For the non-flow, you need to take care of the convention. Okay, what is positive and what is negative. For flow, don't need to care. Okay, so determine the power developed by the system. Assume all potential changes is negligible. Okay, so again, uh, we will use the flow equation. Okay, so this time round, we we'll use the flow equation in this form. So Q dot in plus W dot in 
plus m dot 1 h1 plus gz1 plus c1 square over 2 is equals to q dot out plus w dot out plus m dot 2 h2 plus gz2 plus c2 square over 2 okay because we are given in terms of enthalpy so we will use the enthalpy form okay just now for question 4 we are given in terms of specific internal energy and your pressure and specific volume so we will use the u plus pv form okay so now we cancel out the terms that we do not need or that is irrelevant okay q dot in don't have w dot in don't have okay potential negligible so gz1 don't have okay q dot out have w dot out have h2 have gz2 don't have okay so again we need to do some manipulation because we are given in terms of h1 minus h2 okay so we have h1 and h2 here so we need to do some shifting so m dot h1 minus h2 okay plus m dot 1 c1 square over 2 is equals to q dot out plus w dot out plus m dot 2 c2 square over 2 okay so we shift things to the left hand side then we plug in the values 0.65 okay 3 4 5 so again we work in kilojoule eh? so c1 is 150 square over 2000 Oh. Bear in mind why we need to divide by 1000 eh? Q dot out is uh, 60 plus W dot out which is our unknown plus M dot 2 plus C2 which is uh, 60 square over 2000 Okay, so that's it Press your calculator, press your calculator Press your calculator, press your calculator You will get your W dot out Okay, in this case, it will be 170.39 kilojoule per second. Alright. Okay. So, for the last question of the day, question 6. Okay, same thing, steady flow process 1.8 kg per second. Okay, so M.1 is equal to M.2, which is equal to 1.8 kg per second enters the system with a velocity of 120 so C1 is 120 okay specific enthalpy of 3250 so H1 is 3250 and leave the system with a velocity of 30 C2 is 30 specific enthalpy of 1630 If the heat is lost to the surrounding, is 200 kilojoule per second. So Q dot out is 200 lah. Change in potential negligible. Determine power developed by the system. Okay, so same old thing. Write down our flow equation. Q dot in plus W dot in plus M dot 1 H1 plus gz1 plus c1 square over 2 is equals to q dot out plus w dot out plus m dot 2 h2 plus gz2 plus c2 square over 2 okay all right so we cancel the again unnecessary terms q dot in don't have w dot in don't have okay potential also negligible potential negligible uh that's it okay we can ready to plug in the values okay so this will be 1.8 times 3250 plus 120 square over 2000 is equals to 200 plus w dot out plus 1.8 1630 plus 30 square over 2000 okay so W dot out in this case we calculate will be two seven two eight point one five kilojoule per second. Okay, so after a while you realize that things are getting a bit boring, uh, or repetitive. Okay, to be honest, this is one of the 
easiest task in thermodynamics okay you just have to identify the correct values and then plug in into the equation accordingly not much variation okay sure to score the marks if you listen and do your practice diligently okay b the cross section area of the inlet pipe is the specific volume of the fluid of the inlet is 0.14 okay so we want to find the cross section area of the inlet pipe so there's only one formula in the notes a1 is equals to v1 m dot 1 over c1 okay so a1 is your cross section area of the inlet pipe v1 is the specific volume of the inlet pipe m dot 1 is the mass flow rate c1 is the velocity of the inlet pipe okay so just plug in the value 0 0.14 multiply by 1.8 divided by your speed okay your speed is uh, inlet is 120 okay so this will give you a 0 0.0021 meter square okay okay so that's it for tutorial 2 Okay, so just some closing remarks. Okay, tutorial 2 actually covers the most basic and fundamental concept of uh, the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, so essentially this is the base or the fundamental building block of our whole module. Okay, so long as you fully understand these two equations and how to apply them. Okay, it should be quite smooth sailing throughout the course. Okay, of course I, I cannot say that there's no more challenges ahead. There will still be. Alright, but of course we, we try to take our first step properly. Okay, so if you have done your tutorial too, then uh, well done. Okay, I will see you in class. Thank you. Bye-bye.